Bienvenue dans l'épisode de cette semaine du bon drame spectaculaire dramatique. Great, got it done in one take. I'm happy with that. I've been practicing that all week. Um, <laughs> why am I talking in French? Well, I will get onto that in a minute, but we're looking at a, a French distillery, obviously. Um, before we do, though, a uh, big thank you to everybody that watched last week's episode of the show, liked, commented, all that kind of stuff. Um, I think I've still got some comments to catch up on, so uh, bear with me and I'll do so as soon as I can. But um, yeah, thought it went, went well. Good episode, I thought. Um, really looking forward to today's episode, it has to be said. Um, interesting, uh, quite unique sort of French distillery we're looking at today uh, called Domaine de Haute Glace uh, in the uh, the French Alps. Um, now the sort of domain itself, well, the chateau has been around since uh, the 1660s, I believe. But uh, the, the 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 whiskey making uh, in the place has only sort of been going on since 2009, when a chap called uh, Frédéric Rival uh, set up um, a, a distillery in part of the uh, part of the, the one of the properties on the the estate, and uh, decided that. Um, he really wanted to explore this whole concept of terroir in whiskey. Yes, yes, I know, I know, you've heard it all before. And yes, as you well know, I'm, I was well, uh, I was well known for being quite a skeptic of the whole concept of terroir in spirits in whiskey. Uh, certainly, uh, it wasn't until uh, Adam Hammett at uh, Brooklady kindly sent me some samples all a long time ago now of the uh, Brooklady uh, regional trials that they were doing. Um, sent me the new make samples and there was indeed quite a distinct difference between them and it just got me thinking well yeah, maybe there is something to do with this whole um, kind of toar and whiskey concept um, I mean like I said you know I was always of the impression that I understand the concept of toar in wine I work in wine I, I'm fully signed up to that I've tasted wines that you know that display that character but I always thought that the, the process of of making whiskey was so much longer than making wine and uh, just the, the, the whole if there was a nuance to the barley it just wouldn't you know um, come through after all these different p parts of the process but I was obviously wrong and that was backed up by the fact that when Waterford when Mark Rainier sort of started Waterford in, in Ireland um, and kindly sent me the samples of their new make well you know I mean we were talking single farms here I mean you know geekery to the nth degree it has to be said and you know th and, and that sort of like you know brought home to me the fact that there was something to this whole two hour in whiskey business and you know um the next question was well yes okay I can see this in the new make how is it going to stack up once it's spent a few years in cask and as you know Waterford have used a number of different uh, types of cask to sort of in their their single farm origin range and there is still a difference so um, although the spirit is relatively young uh, it's implying that you know even though the layering on of different oak characters has uh, uh, hasn't diminished the um, the toir element of the spirit. Whether that carries on once you've had extended maturation in cask and you've brought in oxidation and all that kind of stuff, or more oxidation as the case may be, uh, will there still be an element of toir? Of course, that we, we don't know until it gets there, and this is all sort of in its kind of infancy, if you like. Um, anyway, um, so <laughs> it's quite funny that uh, on the, uh, the, the the domain's website, and I'll, I'll read you their kind of mission statement, um, our senses and emotions offer the most direct and intimate way for us to reconnect with our living environment. The smell of freshly cut straw in a field framed by mountains can be enough to trigger a lost memory and recall those close links that connect us to our ecosystems. At Hope's Glass, we explore these delicate paths throughout the season in the creation of our whiskey thanks to you, a unique resource, the world's very first organic farm distillery. Now, you're probably rolling your eyes a little bit and going, Ooh, usual flowery stuff found on um, whiskey websites, and um, sometimes I definitely agree with you, but maybe it's because they're French. Maybe it's because you know that they are a little bit obsessed with this whole Toir thing, um, that maybe there's something to it. And... Um, 
This is not the first time I've encountered their, their, their um, spirits, shall we say. Uh, back in 2014 when um, there was a, uh, the previous uh, distributors, and, and obviously I'd just like to say a big thank you to The Domain and to the current distributors, Remy Contro, for the samples for today's episode of the show. It's very, very much appreciated. Um, but their first release was, was technically this stuff, the unaged... Um, rye spirit that was called uh, Volson White Rhino um, still exists because I've got it here but the White Rhino seems to have disappeared unfortunately um, and it's an interesting story behind that that the reason it was called the Volson White Rhino was um, partly because obviously the rye was grown on the Volson Hill but um, it was also to do with the guy that that built the, the, the chateau at the Domain in 1660, a, uh, a knight called Marcus Volson de la Combiere. Um, and uh, so, yeah, so you've got the Volson bit. The, re the rhino bit is because this um, Marcus Volson was a, a herald and allegedly drew pictures of all manner of weird and wonderful creatures, including a rhino. Um, hence why the rhino was uh, ended up on the, um, uh, on the label. Don't know why it's disappeared, but anyway, that's the, it's obviously the Rangers had this kind of grand makeover. I mean, you just look at the bottles, certainly if you've seen them in the flesh, they are really, really spectacular, it has to be said. Um, <laughs> one final thing to say about uh, this uh, Marcus uh, Volson chap, and I don't know whether this is true or not, um, but apparently um, he... Uh, uh, murdered his wife and and her lover uh, and then skewered them and um, barbecued them in the chimney of the domain and when I read that I just thought how French <laughs> how, how Gallic um, not the murdering of the wife and the lover but calling your your product after somebody that had done that I mean I just thought that was just you know uh, apologies if you're offended by that but you know to me being an anglophile um you know they just see, see just so typically typically uh french it has to be said but anyway um and as far as i'm aware nobody was uh, murdered in the uh, the making of these um these whiskies or maybe i might be uh, you never know but anyway um so i don't really know too too much about this uh, frederick revol chap um and, but like i said this sort of the domain host class is uh, found in the Alps and the name translates to farm in the Alps um, and it's uh, found at an, uh, an altitude of 900 meters approximately half a mile uh, up and um, they like I said they, their rye is grown in two different locations we'll get onto that in, in due course when we look at the, uh, the the samples and so you know they are definitely looking at the whole concept of Tois but like Waterford they're also looking at how oak affects their spirit so their single malt whiskies are uh, they have a single malt they also have two single casks which are currently not available in the UK and uh, I've been given sort of you know um the, the opportunity to to review them so um, I, I like to think this might well be the first first full review of the whole range but certainly the first review on youtube maybe of uh, of their single malt or sing, and uh, um so yeah very very much like waterford it's all not just about the tour geekiness but it's about how the blend work how the blending comes together certainly with their their, their sort of flagship um for want of a better word um single malt whiskey and then how the oak interacts with that whiskey as well it's a it's a, a grand experiment um if you like and um well, I think I'm going to sort of uh, stop trying to murder a French accent and get on and um, tell you what I'm going to be tasting this afternoon. Right, okay, so we're going to kick off with, well, <laughs> I, I say the new make. It's called um, Organic Rye Eau de Vie. Uh, it's bottled at 43%. Um, it's triple distilled. Um, it's rested in neutral containers, apparently stainless steel and amphora before being bottled. And the domain claims you should not mistake it for new make. Right, okay, <laughs> we'll see about that one when we get to taste it. Uh, then we're going to move on to the first of the two uh, rye whiskies. So this is now, you can see the picture, the bottles are angled. Now the reason the bottles are angled is confusing, because they have this little label on the edge. And um, 
The only way to tell the two different rides apart is one has a yellow circle and one is called yellow square. Okay. Um, they also give them this fiendishly um, complex code as well, <laughs> um, which consists of letters and numbers. So um, the first bottle we'll be looking at is the yellow circle. Uh, this is called R18P23B. Now, um, the first letter, I believe, stands for the um, what was used to produce it, which in this instance was rye. Uh, the second is, the, or the, the, the numbers are basically the year it was um, harvested uh, next one is the plot number and uh, I think that I think that's that's what it is I forgot to look it up in actual fact which is a bit bit crap of me really isn't it anyway so um the yellow circle is made from rye that is grown on the Volson hill on its organic soil um, it is basically first aged in ex cognac casks and then in what they have called fulette casks which are small 112 litre um, casks that they specifically made from odd bits of stave from various other casks as far as I can uh, see um, so basically there's probably bits of sherry casks, bits of French oak, bits of American oak, bits of god knows what um, in these little casks and it's then a finished or holy age for five years now, um, number the second of the rye whiskies, this is yellow square, um, exactly the same, okay, so same distillation, uh, same aging, except that this is, comes from rye that's grown at the base of the uh, Mount Aguilé, um, and here the, the, the soil type is completely different, it's not volcanic like on, on Volson, it is primarily lime uh, limestone scree um, so we'll see if there is a distinct difference between the two uh, rye whiskies. then we're going to move on to uh, the single malt um, so this is that called uh, indigene um, and it's bottled at 44% and as a blend like I said so now they're moving away from the, the toile concept or keeping that in the background but looking at blending their spirit so it's basically produced from Eau de Vie from 2012 to 2019 uh, vintages and the aging is carried out in a selection of French oak um, different types of French oak, New Cecile, uh, Peduculate, I hope I've got that right, um, oak and old uh, old ex um, oak glass whiskey casks, cognac, armagnac and wine. So they've gone down the sort of like the, um, the cuvee um, approach of uh, Waterford. So it's basically, you know, blended spirit, loads and loads of different casks, well, we'll see see what uh, that's all about. Uh, then we're going to move on to the two single casts. So these are brand spanking new. This is a uh, green circle, I think. Um, no, it's green triangle. Sorry. Um, so green triangle is the first um, uh, expression. Um, no, it's not. That's, yeah, green triangle. Yep, yeah, green triangle is the first expression, which is basically. Um, made from barley that's grown on the Valsen uh, vineyard site, or vineyard site, on the Valsen site, um, and basically they've distilled them exactly the same, but now they're aging them in different casks. So Green Triangle spends uh, seven years in an ex-Hermitage Blanc cask, and the next bottling, uh, which is a uh, Green Circle, exactly the same, except it's aged in sixth fill, oat glass whiskey cask. I'm quite surprised actually. Um, it's really dark for sixth fill and it's picked up that much colour. I'm really really quite surprised. So this is, so we're going to be have quite a, an interesting episode of the show. It might run on a little bit so um, kind of bear with me and um, well uh, let's kick off with the, uh, the the new make. Oh sorry, no the unaged eau de vie. Mm. Right, okay, so let's kick off with the organic rye eau de vie, so bottled at 43%. Let's see what the nose gives us. It's got a lovely freshness, a lovely minerality. Um, it's quite oily as well. It smells like new make to me at the end of the day. I mean, you're not going to get away with that. Um, I'm, I'm sorry. Um, 
It's got a lovely natural character, a subtle off the still note, not too many congeners, a very fresh, very clean, very mineral, like I said, it's got that, I mean, you know, it, it, glacial is the word that, that springs to mind, and I don't know whether that's a sort of, you know, an, a, an association, because I know where it's grown, um, but there is a real cool sort of glacial sort of mineral freshness to it. Um, a little bit of rye sweetness, a little bit of spice, not a huge amount in actual fact. Um, it's quite quite subtle, quite elegant. Um, anyway, let's see what pass on. Mm, fuller, richer, more oilier very mineral finish though, it's almost kind of, again, almost kind of takes your breath away, that the finish. Um, really rich, really complex, dark rye, there's a almost kind of coal dust note there coming through, um, soil, earth, very fresh again, little bit of dark rye spice coming through, so, um, really complex but I've always the, the problem is it's sort of like you know with, from a selling point of view um, is kind of what do you do with it you know um, do you just kind of sell it as a, as, as kind of um, uh, new make whiskey in inverted commas rye whiskey um, do you sell it as vodka I mean you know when I first sort of had it in um, <laughs> you know the, the, the white rhino uh, again I had didn't really know what to do with it so it kind of got left with the vodkas it has to be said but um it is really intriguing, really interesting, and it kind of obviously sets out the characteristics um, of the sort of the tour of um, the, the Volson and basically what the, uh, the the domain is attempting to say. So, yeah, really nice start. Let's, uh, let's see how it uh, progresses. Right, okay, so we're now moving on to Yellow Circle. So this is... Um, the rye grown on the Valson Hill, uh, but now sort of spent five years in oak. So uh, let's see what nose goes on this end, shall we? Right, the first thing you notice is the oak, <laughs> it's actually pretty subtle. I mean, I'm not getting a huge amount of oak. And I, I, I remember when I tasted the, um, the, the Waterford saying that if it was me and I was looking into this whole Tawile concept, I'd just age it in, you know, refill American oak, you know, have very little oak influence because you just want the spirit to, to speak. And um, pretty much this is what they've done. I mean, again, it's got that sort of slight off the still note. It's very young. It's youthful. Um, it's got a quite a minerality again quite fresh a little bit more fruit though a little bit more fleshiness baked apple banana banana skin possibly um apricot a touch of spices almost kind of almost kind of rose petal gewurz tramony uh, gewurz tramina kind of oriental spice note um mm, lovely really really impressive very fresh um uh, quite mineral got a sort of almost kind of chalkiness to it, uh, sort of a chalky minerality, um, which is quite a surprise because I would have expected that from the limestone soil, not the volcanic soil uh, on the Volson, but um, impressive, really interesting spirit, it has to be said. Let's see what the parts like. Mm, fuller, more fruit, underripe banana, apricot, melon, again really mineral, um, not as, as it, it's interesting, it's certainly not as kind of peppery or spicy as say an American rye for example, um, it's a lot more subtle, yes there is a little bit of that sort of oriental spice going on, some rose petal mar, um, a little bit of an off the still note, it's a little a little on the short side, but that's kind of like it's minerality and it's alcohol, and, you know, all kind of combining. Um, again, a little bit of smoke, wood smoke. Um, again, it's got that chalkiness, but 
overall not a huge amount of oak character so you're getting all this lovely spirit character um, and it certainly follows on from the, uh, the, the, the O to V and you can certainly see the lineage between the two and by not overly oaking the whiskey um, it certainly sort of allowed you to kind of like see that sort of um, that, that, that thread if you like. Right okay so moving on to the yellow square so this is rye grown on the base of Mount Aguilé um, and production exactly the same. That is completely different. That is such a different nose that it's untrue. Um, it's denser, it's earthier. It's got a, almost kind of like pulped uh, agave kind of character. Um, pulped white fruits, coal dust, black pepper, minerals, but not chalky minerals. It's a more um, intense, more I wouldn't say rounded, more intense kind of nose. Um, it's more emphasised. It just seems to emphasise the rye more so. Um, again, very, very little oak. I mean, there's just practically no oak. I mean, it's a little bit of vanilla maybe, but, you know, again, we're talking spirit front and centre. And um, it feels a little bit more evolved, I suppose, than the um, yellow circle. Um, but that's probably because it feels more denser uh, and a little bit more fruitier. Let's see what the power's like. Right, so the palette is showing its age now. It is saying it's a five-year-old spirit. A little bit more off the steel notes. Um, Again, it's got that pulp de gave kind of character, loads of pure black pepper, um, almost more granity minerals um, than the, um, the, 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 the rye grown on the Vulsen. So it's, less, it's not chalky at all, it's more, more granity. Um, it's um, more fruity as well, apricot, pine, pineapple, yeah, a little bit of pineapple, a bit more sort of banana, that kind of thing, fleshy white fruits and again it has that sort of very much that kind of agave sort of tequila -y, sort of pulp fruit kind of character a um, bit longer as well bit a little bit of citrus kind of coming through in the finish um, and although the palette kind of like feels more as a five-year-old spirit would do it does feel a, a touch more evolved and a little bit more complex possibly but distinctly different from um, the yellow circle so um, yep the whole to our concept is just just shining through on both of these spirits so um yep hats off to frederick right okay so let's move on to the first of the single malt so this is the indigene uh organic single malt bottle 44 percent let's see what knows gives us on this then shall we quite cereally, almost warty, quite sweet as well. Um, there's a little bit of a, an off the still oiliness. Um, it kind of reminds me a little bit of the rye in that it's got that sort of, um, well, certainly it reminds me a little bit of um, yellow square, yellow square? Um, yeah, yellow square. I can't remember my squares and my circles, triangles, waves and all sorts of stuff. Um, there's a little bit more oak character going on here. Not a huge amount, but there is some oak. Um, it's it's interesting. Um, there's some rose petal mar. There's some potpourri spices. It's kind of... Mm, yeah, okay. It's, it's okay. It's interesting. Um, it's not really saying I'm definitely French. The oak is probably more noticeable here on this particular bottling um, but then that was exactly the same with the Waterford Cuvée. The Waterford Cuvée seemed to sort of be a lot more oaky than some of their other spirits it has to be said. So that's fine. Cereally, creamy. Again, it's got that twang of an off the still kind of note there. Um, slightly minerally. 
a little less oak. The oak kind of really only starts to come through on the mid palette, and I'm getting sort of American oak vanillins, a little bit of sort of like tight French tannin, um, French oak tannins. Um, yeah, it definitely has, a, again, a real minerality, a real freshness. The palette doesn't seem to sort of like show as much oak as what the nose does. Um, I think it's interesting. Uh, it, again, it's a, an experiment. I'd like to see this with a little bit more time under its belt. I'm not entirely sure exactly how old this is, being a sort of a, uh, a blend of... Um, Eau de Vie that was uh, probably distilled between 2013 and, and 2020, I imagine. But um, so it actually has a bit of age, um, but it just I think it needs a little bit longer. Um, but it's kind of quite interesting, and and it again it has that sort of distinct sort of terroir kind of minerally kind of character. So it'll be interesting to see now how this kind of spirit style handles um, being aged in um, well. Th these uh, different types of casts. Well, I mean, in, in essence, if, if this is anything to go by, and, and although they have used an awful, inordinate amount of different casks here, um, the oak is relatively subtle, so it'd be interesting to see if that sort of subtlety of oak carries on. Okay, so let's move on to the, uh, the first of the two single cast bottling. So this is the Green Triangle, which has spent seven years in an ex um, ex hermitage uh, uh, ex crow's hermitage blanc cask. Let's see what the nose gives us. Then dense, nutty, whiny, um, quite cask orientated to start off with. Um, a little bit of barley, some honey. It's got an almost kind of late harvested honey sweetness. Um, toasty oak. Not a huge amount of spirit. The spirit is kind of just about noticeable. It's got quite a, a sort of a, a, a minerality again. Um, so you can kind of pick up on the spirit, but the oak is very much in control. Lovely nose, it has to be said. I really like this. Um, mm, touch of, late touch of tobacco. Um, it's got a... I'm kind of almost sort of smelling the lees here. Um, it's that pure and that natural, and that is one of I think that is the key um, uh, thing with the, all of these uh, bottlings is they have just a, a lovely natural characteristic. Um, yes, this is more heavy on the oak, um, but it's unusual. Um, I can't think of very many whiskies that had been aged in um, that type of cask. Let's see what uh, the palate is. A lot of oak again, whiny, nutty, white fruit, um, touch of rose petal spirit, quite a, min a mineral finish again. Um, it's a little masked on the finish, um, but it's got a lovely length to it, sort of almost citric note kind of coming through on the aftertaste. Um, again, I get that kind of leasiness, that sort of um, grapey leasy kind of character, just, uh, you know, on the, on the mid palate. Um, I like that. I think it's a. I think it's a lovely whiskey. Um, you can just about taste the, the the characteristics of the spirit. I mean, it kind of helps having tasted sort of like the range. You kind of like obviously get a feel for what the spirit is trying to say to you, um, and therefore you can kind of almost pick it up. I think if you were kind of tasting this kind of without any uh, prior reference point, you might miss it a little bit but you would certainly pick up on the, the quality of it the quality of the cast the interesting characteristics it has and so overall yeah i like that after the rain, oh, after the rain. okay so let's move on to the final whiskey of the afternoon so this is the single cast organic whiskey green circle um so aged in sixth fill oat glass uh Casks, let's see with or cask singular, I should say. Um, let's see what those gives us then, shall we? Gritty, um, quite tannic, um, definitely getting some American oak, a very bourbon y kind of character, sort of, you know, 
American rye. I'm getting dark, spicy American rye notes. Um, again, a little bit of a minerality, a little bit of chocolate, dark chocolate. Um, again, it's kind of like I've prior experiences is saying that I can pick up the spirit character, but the oak is very, very much in control. Uh, very clean. Um, really complex. The complexity lying within the sort of um, the, the, the different staves. So obviously, you know, this is, I would imagine this cask is probably predominantly ex-American oak. Um, probably ex-Bourbon and ex-Rye, I would have thought, because that's, that's the overt character that I'm getting from this the spirit and this is again another interesting concept isn't it you know um how much influence the the previous cask is having on a spirit i mean we know that um from past experience that it can range from an awful lot to not a lot um but here you can just about pick out the sort of minerally sort of fresh spirit but again the oak is very much front and center let's see what the power's on Mmm, full, smoky, plenty of dark rye, sweet bourbon -y notes, um, American oak, lovely spiciness, I'm getting ginger, cinnamon, pepper, um, it does say American sort of um, rye, spicy character coming through quite, quite intensely. Um, again, more towards the finish and the sort of the, the late mid palate, you get that minerally sort of spirit character, that freshness. Um, actually, no, it's got a, a, a an odd is the wrong word. It, it a, mm, asparagus and garden peas I get on the aftertaste. I mean, where in God's name does that come from? I mean, it's got a real kind of green leaf, not leafy, green sort of asparagus kind of note right on the finish I mean where the hell did that come from um but again it's kind of like the predecessor it is very much oak centric um the spirit is noticeable just about um it's a lovely whiskey it has to be said it's got a lovely complexity I really like that um but I think the more interesting concept is within their rise and I I, I find the sort of the um the the terroir element of uh, of their sort of exploration to be a little bit more interesting i mean these are great whiskies it has to be said but i think the sort of the rise are kind of like where they're at should we say hi, 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 hi. Hey. right okay so let's sum today's episode of the show firstly uh, a big big thank you to the domain and to their distributors uh, remy contro for samples for today's episode of the show um exciting i mean i have to say that this is probably the most interesting french spirit whiskey if you like um that i've tasted i mean I've, and i'm all right i've not tasted a huge amount of uh, french whiskies but they do all seem to fall into this kind of um sort of trap of the European whiskies in that they're bottled far, far too young. I mean, you can argue to a certain extent this lot have all been bottled a bit too young, but you're kind of missing the point there. That the, the concept is kind of all about the two are uh, certainly with the rise. So you you want to bottle them relatively young, and and you want to say, look, this is what we're up to. So it's kind of like almost kind of work in progress. Um, the organic eau de vie, well, you know. No matter how much the distillery say this is more than um, yeah, new make spirit, it new make spirit really. At the end of the day, um, you can't dress it up any other way. It's interesting. It sets out the character of what they're trying to do. I always love tasting new make spirit, and I always say to, um, to to you guys, if you have the opportunity to taste new make spirit, do so because it gives you the basic DNA of whatever distillery's character it is because it's uncluttered no oak it's just all about the spirit character and to a certain extent um the two rye whiskies you know are very much uncluttered by oak as well so you do get all that lovely sort of um terroir led character and you know um just again it's another another 
to a point to prove that tar in, in whiskey uh, does actually exist. Um, the um, uh, the single malt, yeah, okay, it was interesting. Again, a bit on the young side, but you could pick up the minerality. You could see what was what the distillery was was doing, and you know, pleasant pleasant whiskey. The um, chromatage finish and the uh, sort of uh, the other bottling in that had been finished or aged in um, uh, the oak glass cask again display how oak kind of works with spirit it's kind of it's not sort of anything sort of new it has to be said we all know how oak interacts with spirit um but i suppose it's kind of like how does the oak interact with the oak glass spirit i suppose is probably the more intriguing thing and you can just about pick it up but they are very very much oak centric they're lovely whiskies at the end of the day the the, the crow's hermitage bottling certainly had that um uh, white fruit sort of whiny leasy kind of character and certainly the um uh, other bottling that had been aged in the oak glass cask seemed to sort of suggest more um american and oak uh, american bourbon and american rye stuffs and anything else didn't really get an in uh, very much in the way of a sherry no or anything else um so this is kind of like the random aspect of uh, of the oak glass cask i suppose uh, at the end of the day but uh, can't argue with the quality mind-blowingly good quality spirit bit expensive it has to be said and i and they are bottled in 50 cl bottles i don't know why that is it has to be said um and i don't know why they're quite so expensive as they are um but you know waterford are expensive at the end of the day so it's kind of like you know this is the sort of the modern reality that we're in and uh, if you really want to sort of explore these kind of spirits you're going to have to have kind of deep pockets and i know there's a lot of you are going to go oh i'm not paying that for an experimental five-year-old whiskey yeah like i said to waterford i would suggest making a miniature pack certainly of the um the rise make a miniature pack of the rise the three different um the, the new the new make sorry o de v um and the, the the two rise put them together in a tri pack and your customers can basically sort of see exactly what you're trying to say because at the end of the day Who's got the money to, well, I mean, there are people that are you know, horribly rich that can spend, you know, several hundred pounds on three bottles of whiskey um, and, you know, dabble to their heart's content. But for, for most of us mere mortals, you know, if we had sort of miniatures, 5CL, 10CL, something like that, um, that, and we could then sort of, you know, hopefully see exactly what you're up to, buy into your concept and, you know, then maybe sort of purchase a bigger bottle. Who knows? Anyway, um that's just my my opinion for what it's worth so anyway uh i, th I think this has been a really really intriguing uh, episode of the show i hope you've enjoyed it um there won't be an episode of the show next week just to let you know um because i will be at the nottingham wine festival on the saturday the 17th i think pretty much all the tickets are sold so um um kind of missed out if you've not bought a ticket um so i will be there chatting talking wine rather than whiskey it has to be said but anyway um until uh, next time hope you enjoyed this week's episode of the show all that's left to say is bon drama no that's not right no bon bon dram bon dram and um i don't know what the hell the french is for um yeah anyway <laughs> next time There was nothing after the spring rain And if heaven were only crying without any solution After the rain, maybe there'll be nothing else but rain Then one day, we will love the very idea That we